It's time now for a look latest in local news. In the news, two governmental meetings this afternoon. The Wayne County Board of Education meets today at 6 p.m. at the Tech Center, and the Justice City Council meets tonight at 7 p.m. at City Hall. On the school board agenda, Judy Beaver will be on hand to recognize the Georgia Youth Apprenticeship students who completed the program. Under items of business, the update on the school's capital outlay projects. Dr. Harrison will be on hand to discuss the school calendars for the years 2024, 2025, and 2025, 2026. Personnel handbooks are on the agenda for approval. The May 2023 financial report on the agenda, along with a report on the fiscal year 22 audit and an executive session to discuss personnel. All that at the Tech Center at 6 p.m. meeting by the Wayne County Board of Education. Then at 7 p.m., the Jessup City Council is set to meet at City Hall on the agenda discussion on a recreational trails grant program, discussion about South Palm Street subdivision plat with building inspector Don Heron. Interim Police Chief Chris Hamilton on the agenda with a request to purchase four new Dodge Chargers for the Jessup Police Department, the 2023 June financial report on the agenda, and there is an executive session to discuss personnel on the agenda, along with items with the city manager, items with the commissioners, and items with the mayor, all that at 7 p.m. at City Hall. WIFLFM will have reports on both meetings for you tomorrow here on the local news. One item not on the city's agenda is the District 5 Commission seat, which has been vacant since the passing of longtime Commissioner Ray Haas. He passed back on May 27. City Council has not been able to reach a consensus on who should replace Ray Haas, and that seat, along with Districts 1 and 4, will soon be up for election in November. Qualifying for those seats begins on Monday, August 21st. Former City Manager Mike Dill says he'll be a candidate for that seat in District 5. He's one of three names submitted for consideration to the Council to fill that seat, but a motion by Commissioner Tim Caulfield, seconded by Bill Harvey, was voted down 3-2 with the other three commissioners, Stanley Todd, Shirley Armstrong, and Pamela Schumann, voting no. Council believes that the appointment is now in the hands of the governor, Brian Kemp, who's been made aware of the situation. But according to his press secretary, Garrison Douglas, he's discussing the situation with his legal team to determine if the governor has to make an appointment or can simply decline and let the voters of District 5 make their selection in November. If that's the case, the seat will remain vacant until January of 2024. NWFOFM continues to follow this story as it develops, but again, the topic not on tonight's agenda may be discussed under items with commissioners or items with the mayor. Certainly, the city officials have been in contact with the governor. Maybe they've got an update on the situation. Once again, the council meets tonight at 7 p.m., and hopefully we'll get an update on that situation on District 5 at tonight's meeting. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Another news a reminder, Congressman Buddy Carter is set to join us this Thursday on the World Famous Butch and Bob Show to discuss the latest in Washington and around the district. He wants to discuss the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, bipartisan bill. And that's just one of the topics this Thursday. Congressman Buddy Carter is set to join us this Thursday on the World Famous Butch and Bob Show. More than seven months after losing his U.S. Senate bid, Republican Herschel Walker's campaign still has nearly $4.5 million in its account. Recently, some donors are pressing to get their contributions back. The most recent finance report filed Saturday shows that six donors received refunds totaling $15,600. Among them is Jim Kingston, an Atlanta insurance executive, who's the son of former U.S. Representative Jack Kingston. Kingston, who received his refund, says Herschel has always been known for his generosity, and I'm glad he's willing to reimburse those of us who worked hard on his campaign. Under federal election law, campaign committees can give gifts to charity and political organizations though they can't be used for purposes that personally benefit the candidate. Walker, who recently re-enrolled at the University of Georgia to complete his degree, did not comment on the report. Former Heisman Trophy winner, the only Republican candidate to lose a statewide race in last year's midterm elections, followed the Democratic incumbent and U.S. Senator Raphael Warnock. Hospice Society of Georgia is selling tickets to their fundraising event entitled Market to Midnight, which is set for Saturday, August 26th from 7.30 to midnight, with, band, with the band Six Piece Suits performing the event to take place at the Wayne County Farmers Market at 533 North First Street in Jessup. Tickets are on sale now for $15 each. Tonight will include some silent auction items, food vendors, dancing, all the proceeds benefiting Hospice Society Georgia. If you need a ticket or more information, simply contact Kylie McGregor at the number 912-588-0080. We'll be back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Final notes of news, Wayne County School is set to open on August the 4th. The Wayne County School System nursing staff wants to remind parents that there are immunization requirements that must be met before children can attend school in August. Students entering 7th grade next year and all children who are new entrants into a Georgia school in grades 8 through 12 must have received one dose of the Tdap vaccine and one dose of the meningitis vaccine to meet 
immunization requirements. In addition, all Georgia students 16 years of age or older who are entering or transferring into 11th grade will need proof of a meningitis booster. Immunization requirements for children of all ages can be found on the Wayne County School System's website. And again, if you need more information, you can contact the office at 912-208-7308. Arthur Williams is hosting a jump start for all incoming 6th graders. That's set for August 1st from 5 to 8 p.m. at the school. And that sixth grade jump start at Arthur Williams Middle School on August 1st from 5.30 to 8 p.m. The Wayne County High School is holding a freshman orientation on Thursday, August 3rd from 12.30 to 3 p.m. in the high school auditorium. This is for all incoming freshmen and it's for students only. At 2.30, they'll ask the parents to join their students for a brief information or session at the high school auditorium. And they'll visit teachers' classrooms for open house at 3 p.m. Wayne County High School open house. And open house for all grades will be held on August 3rd from 3.30 to 6 p.m. And parents and students are reminded of that. Again, freshman orientation, again, taking place at the high school August 3rd from 12.30 to 3 p.m. in the high school auditorium. And the Wayne County Board of Tourism has a special inaugural back-to-school event entitled Touch a Truck. The event will feature heavy equipment, emergency vehicles, tow trucks, bucket trucks, along with food and informational booths where kids can see them up close. The event will be centered around West Walnut Street between North Macon and Northeast Broad Streets. Streets will be closed to vehicles. The first hour of the event will be a quiet hour for sensory sensitive children. During this time, no sirens will be used. Visitors are encouraged to shop local businesses in the downtown area for back to school supplies. For vendor or booth information, simply contact the Wayne County Board of Tourism Board Office. That number 912-427-3233. Or for participation information, contact Donnie Ray at 912-424-0376 and touch a truck set for Saturday, August 5th from 9 to 2 p.m. in downtown Jessup. And that's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan, save a great day.